Okay, good morning. Uh, this video concerns uh, the making of a graphite piston um, for the current uh, build of the hot air Stirling engine. So we're going to, um, this morning we're going to cut a piece of, uh, we're going to cut a piston out of a piece of graphite rod and I've already started the process here. So this is going to take some time because um, my process is to whittle this down very slowly and try to make it fit exactly perfectly into the uh, chamber tube. So um, we're going to be whittling this down slowly and, uh, and testing it a number of times to see when we get it to the point we want it. Uh, we need it to be about 688 thousandths, or a little bit more than a 5 eighths of an inch. So, um, <clears throat> with that, um, you might want to click forward through this if it's boring. But um, after the process of cutting this down and parting it off, uh, we'll take it over to the mill, and we're going to cut a slot in the, in the end of it throw it and tap it um, for the, uh, the push rod pin to go through it. And then after we finish that we're going to um, uh, we're gonna put it in the engine and see if it works. And uh, that will be the, uh, the proof of the pudding uh, when we get to that point. So just uh, watch and enjoy, I guess. At this point, um, we've whittled it down enough that um, we're we're going to start trying to uh, to fit a piece of tubing that's the same size as the piston chamber. Um, obviously, I know my hands in the way, but it's um, it's obviously uh, a little bit too large right now. So we got to whittle this down by like a half a thousandth per pass till we till we get it exactly right. If the piston fits too tight in the chamber it won't work. If it fits too loose in the chamber it won't work. So it has to be pretty darn close to be to, to work right. So um, with that we're going to keep uh, whittling it down here until we get it to a point where it, it, uh, it's going to be correct. So um, with that, I'll, I'll be quiet now and we'll continue to uh, watch the video. At this point, <coughs> we're going to introduce a piece of emery cloth. Uh, we got to be very careful in doing that. Uh, actually, the piece of emery cloth that I just touched it with was a little bit too coarse. 
and um, luckily it looks like the fit is okay but we don't dare touch it again we've reached the point of uh, where where the the chamber or the tube fits over it fairly nicely um, actually at this point you could just use a piece of paper this graphite is so soft that might be the best way to go rather than use a piece of uh, emery uh, that was the finest piece of emery I had and uh, actually I have wet and dry that would have worked much better but I think we've reached the point where we're about a half a thou underneath the, the tube size and the piston fits in there nicely um, so with that um, we've got to take it out and and, um, and turn it around and cut it off so that'll be the next step At this point, <coughs> we're going to cut it off. We have a parting tool in there. And we're going to cut off the largest portion, leaving just a whisper of a piece there. Because uh, I think this graphite is pretty brittle. It might be delicate, so I'm going to be really careful. And I'm going to, I'm going to part it off uh, where the largest diameter exists. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to... Uh, through the end, so to speak, and just whittle it back that way. It's got to be one inch long exactly, and I think um, that we we got it to within a half a thousandth of that, so I, I, I think that'll be good. Anyway, we're just going to proceed here, and, and um, so I'll stop now, and, and uh, we'll continue to whittle. Okay, at this point we're going to um, take it out and uh, check the length of it. Uh, as, as I remember, uh, we find it's about 25 thousandths of an inch too long. So we're going to have to put it back in there and, and, and take off exactly 25 thousandths um, to get it to the right exact length. So um, that's where we're at now and we'll, we'll, just, we'll just proceed ahead to... Um, to continue to cut off the, those 25 thousandths.
Okay, we're over at the mill now, and we're going to, uh, I've begun to cut the slot in the, in the, uh, the top. We're using a, uh, uh, ER-13, uh, ER-32, I guess. Uh, ER-32 collet block, um, and 11 uh, collet there. And that, that particular collet block is, uh, rather short. So that's good. I can just stand it on end in the vise and cut the slot. And then I'll be able to uh, flop it over and um, and drill it uh, when I get done with the slot without taking it out of the collet. So that, that, should, that should work out really good. Uh, <clears throat> the collet block is hex, hexagonal, you know, it's a hexagon shaped collet block, which isn't ideal. Um, but I don't have a square collet block that holds that size uh, uh, collet. So my 5C collet block, I do have a square one, but it's, it doesn't work really good for standing it on end because it's a longer collet block. That collet block is nice and short, so it works quite nicely. So what we're going to do now is finish cutting the slot, and we're going to flop it over in the vise, and. Um, and drill it and, and tap it. So what we'll do is we'll drill a hole straight through, um, which would be the small tap size, and then um, we'll drill an eighth inch hole halfway through, which is the size of the wrist pin uh, for the push rod. So uh, this, this uh, piston would probably be better if it was hollow and uh, set up differently, but uh, that's not the way my push rod currently is set up. So uh, with that, I'm just going to replace the exact duplicate of the uh, current uh, aluminum piston. So with that, um, we'll just proceed here and, and um, uh, I'll, I'll stop, stop talking now and we'll go ahead and watch the video. Okay, that pretty much concludes the uh, the uh, the piston. The only thing that was left was um, to tap the one side and then install it in the uh, in the engine. So you can see now that the engine is running, and uh, so the piston was a success. Um, it's the first time I've worked with this graphite so um, it's a little bit of a new experience but um, it worked out okay and and um, the engine's running I do notice that the engine isn't running as fast as it was before so I'm guessing that um, there's a little bit of resistance but that could be just that could just need a little break in time I'm guessing at this point. Um, the RPMs was running up to around 11 or 1200 RPM before and um, so you know I figure after a few minutes it'll it'll be fine. I'm um, 
uh, I turned off the light so you can see the flame. Actually, it looks larger with the lights off than it actually is. But anyway, that's um, uh, that's what size. That's where I've got the flame on it, and it's probably running up there around a thousand RPMs now. So I did shine the. Um, I did try to shine the um, the. Uh, the indicator on there. I have a piece of reflective tape on the on the flywheel, so I can check the RPMs. So anyway, um, but that um, I'll just let this run out, and that'll conclude this video. So I want to thank you for watching. And by the way, this is this is a new procedure for me. I'm trying to narrate um, the video rather than talk during the the uh, filming of it so we'll see how that works out uh, it's a it's a first so just bear with me here <laughs>